Welcome back to the Boom Fit Bros. I'm Gus here with Charlie, and uh, we just got back from quite the travel. Yeah, we, <laughs> it, it, I think it's worth sharing a, a little bit of the the travel complications. This is probably the most entertainment you'll ever it, get out it of this. Really, it, was it funny. really was. My dad actually told me I should write it all down. It, you know, he was. <laughs> He goes, Bob, you need to write these down so you remember. That's actually what his dad sounds like, too. <laughs> and, uh, really. okay, so I'll start it out. Just yep. And, and ch- feel free to chime in. So Take it we away. were headed up to Whistler, Canada for a 10 year CrossFit affiliate gathering. And so this is a, oh, yeah. it was, it was a, it kind of an invitation only. It was a, a privilege to be there, but the people that have been a CrossFit affiliate for over 10 years and they picked Whistler. And I'd never heard of Whistler until this trip. Well, that happens to be at, in British Columbia, which is Canada. You fly into Vancouver. Northwest. Northwest. So we United States, Southwest <laughs> Canada. We, yeah. We booked this trip uh, probably about two months ago. We were supposed to fly out of Houston at 12.50 on Thursday. And depending on when you watch this episode, it just happened to be the seventh worst tropical storm disaster in U.S. history. And it all started unfolding right before we got there. So we pulled into the pretty much the Hardy Toll Road, if you're familiar. We we're about three miles away from the airport. And on the freeway, cars are starting to turn around. To complete 180. And come at us. Not in the... Not in the... Um, <laughs> not exiting. Not in the, the opposite lane. Like, they're in, in our lane. our lane. And they do a three-point turn and come right at us. Yeah. And then that led to us doing the exact same thing and going to the feeder, which led to 45 minutes of not moving. And then Just Gus there. got out in the rain and went up to look at what was going on. Waters were getting high, so no movement. Well, it wasn't just that. It, you know, I got out and ran down to... The intersection, uh, which was no longer an intersection, it Full was water. it was a river, and yeah. it was all, it was all the way up to the roof of like the little compact cars. So then we, you know, we sat there for a while until cars started turning around. In that, in how they did this, I was shocked because it was bumper to bumper traffic. It's bumper then, to bumper. As the back people started reversing and turning around, we did. So we got out. It turns out the freeway opened back up somehow. So we got back. We on got the back on the freeway. Now we are probably two miles from the airport so you can see it and we're at a standstill and people were not losing their minds yes let's just leave it at that i mean it was (laughs) it was crazy and then at some point after probably an hour you know we sit there and our flight's at 12 50 we realize we're gonna miss it i can't imagine how many people were just sitting there in the exact same spot as us people start getting out with their luggage in the rain Carrying their luggage, full on business suit, foot, full business suit, poured on, it's soaked, and and we, so we are on the highway, on the highway, not on the side of the road, like on the highway, stuck for two hours straight, just sitting there. We're both reclined in the chair, yeah, motors off, off. <laughs> motors off, and we were both reading books, and <laughs> and then we look out to our right, and there's like guys like relieving themselves on the side of the road and girls and girls and uh, like just, it was just it, nuts it, it, i've never i've never seen anything like this before we got our flight moved back to 6 55 p.m that day and it you know but at this point it's probably two o'clock 2 15 i'm thinking surely in five hours we'll be able to or even in a couple hours this will settle we're not even a mile away from the runway you would think five hours yeah for sure and around like three we actually started thinking, you know what? We better go park at the eco park and walk because I don't see this clearing. Which out. involved a lot of shifting around in the lane. And, and somehow like, we did. Somehow we did. We get to the eco park. It is pouring like rain steadily, and we're three and a half miles away from the airport, and we're about to walk. We're about to grab our luggage and just walk. Walk. <laughs> and then I call Alicia, and I told her this crazy, you know just happenstance that's his wife yeah this is my wife and i tell her what we're about to do and she goes your your luggage is going to be soaked and i was and i guess i didn't think of that but i said no babe it's in the luggage she goes you don't have waterproof luggage (laughs) she goes all of your clothes are going to be soaking wet so then i told you know i say bye to her i tell her okay we'll call you in a little while i told gus i was like man i don't want to have wet clothes on this trip (laughs) and sure enough 
there was a shuttle that was parked there. So I went over to walk, talk to the guy, see if he could even get us closer to the airport than where we were. I talked to him. He goes, I haven't moved since nine o'clock this morning. I'm instructed not to go anywhere. He goes, you better check your flight because they're canceling flights. And I, and the airport might actually be closed. Sure enough, thank goodness I checked the flights. Our flight had been canceled. Then the airport closed. Well, no, they had moved it back to 1 a.m. Oh, yeah, no, correct. They moved it to 1 a.m. And then the airport closed. And then the airport closed, which we figured the 1 a.m. was just not going to happen. So we started f- calling the airlines after waiting for 45 minutes to an hour on hold and talking to different people. We left where we were to go to the airport at like 8.45 in the morning. It's about 5 p.m. by this point. Yes, like, and, and we're just we've been in flooding, flooded Houston yeah. all day. And, and you're when you're driving around everywhere, the water's rising. There's traffic. We finally got our flight switch. We asked if there was anything out of Austin or Dallas. Sure enough, one out of Dallas. We got one out of Dallas. Six a.m. on Friday morning. So the next day. So it's Thursday night at around five or six. The next flight is in Dallas. It's six a.m. Leaves at six a.m. And Gus called his parents because they live in Dallas. We stayed at his parents' house and ended up flying out of DFW at 6 a.m. and making it to Whistler by around 7 or 8 p.m. that well, night. Well, because we got into Vancouver and then got, you know, after like, so yeah. Dallas to Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City to Vancouver. Vancouver was a drive, two hour, was supposed to be a two hour drive yeah. to Whistler. It ended up being like a three or three and a half hour drive because we got stuck in more traffic. Yes. Um, it was so all that to say <laughs> it was quite the trip and then now customs at Canada oh customs another two hours um, it, yeah it, it, but all that to say it was a phenomenal trip. it was a great trip the travel just we had was a great subpar great weekend there and it just kind of happens to tie into what we're talking about today. it does it does actually which is um it's how to eat while on vacation, which we've kind of briefly touched on before, mm-hmm. but it merits going over again, I think. Yeah. I do want to add to your story, though, or our, yeah. our story. Yeah, I guess. our story. Um, my favorite part of all of that was you calling the airline when they had closed the Houston airport. Like, we had learned the Houston airport was closed until 1 p.m. the following day, meaning no one gets in or out. All flights are grounded. We called the airline and said, yeah, so... And we told him the whole story. We just told you airports closed. And then she, you know, pipes up and says, well, just because the airports closed doesn't mean your flights canceled. <laughs> she did say that. And I was, I was like, well, where do you expect the flight to leave from then the freeway? Uh, like, <laughs> and we're like, well, no, ma'am, like the airports closed. And she goes, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean it's canceled. And we're like, I, I don't think you know wow. what that means. Um, it, it, I, I have never dealt with anything more chaotic close to this it was from nuts. the chaos of the driving and the traffic and people not there was no order no it was zero order and it was I mean normal people would have given up long yeah before. <laughs> wow but we ended I guess up we're just stubborn making the trip we did and it was great now coming back was almost another in- interesting thing too. Nowhere is bad. Nowhere is bad, but you know layover was very short, and we were afraid that we were going to have to go back yeah. to customs for another two hours. And it was, yeah, we did wake up at two in the you morning know, though to get to the airport. Lesson learned: we just <laughs> should fly privately with Greg last. That's uh, or, yeah, just in general, fry. Pro- <laughs> Maybe we buy our own jet. Um, that sounds economical. <laughs> Anyway, we're talking about what you really came here. To, you didn't come here for our side yes, story. Yes, thank you for listening. Thank uh, you for not we had closing your browser yet. or turning off your phone we had and, and hearing that story because it it's definitely worth sharing. We think it's entertaining. <laughs> you may not. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking about uh, eating on vacation. And there's a few things that I like to go into this with the idea of. Uh, the first, as always, and you've probably heard us say this before, is the mindset. Absolutely. Uh huh. Without it, nothing. And this is so cliche. Don't click the close button yet. I have practical stuff for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already listening. Oh well, yeah, this is right down your. Okay, so 
I like to go into all trips and vacations with the idea that I'm going to return in better shape than I left. I think I've mentioned that before, but if you're new to this show, then now you've heard it. Um, and that just pretty much means like I give it, I give the adequate effort that I need to in order to try and make that happen. Does it always happen? No, but you know, I'll say 50% of the time it does. And uh, the other half of the time, come on, like it's vacation. You can let loose a little bit. The problem becomes when I'm vacationing once a month and it's a week long vacation and I'm going all out on all the vacation Mm -hmm. food and alcohol and everything else. That's where things like get into, or the other version of this is you go on your one vacation of the year and you get in that vacation mindset and it's a vacation mindset hangover, meaning like, uh, I don't really want to try and be disciplined. I still wish I was on vacation and I don't want to do anything and like, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's a dangerous place to be. So in order to avoid all of that, I try and go in with the idea that I'm going to be more fit when I come back than when I left. And uh, that's step one, just having that idea. And that alone will get you thinking of things. Maybe you'll eat a little bit. You don't have to eat every menu or every meal off the healthy menu. You know, and that's kind of helps. backwards for most people because I think it most is. people are looking at vacation like, man, I'm going to come back so unhealthy. It's I'm going to come back worse than I left. It's the same thing in the holiday season with me too. Yeah. You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, until New Year's, everybody's just like, it's the holidays. I'm going to have an extra slice of pie. Like, mm-hmm. I have family over. Like, who can be disciplined then anyway, right? Mm-hmm. You can. Um, you just have to go in with the proper headspace. And that's the whole point of this. Um, but I do want to hear your thoughts on this because you're kind of the king of this realm. <laughs> well, I, you know, I would say, and, and I don't travel a ton. Um, but where I would point that back to Unless is you the past three months for you. <laughs> it is what is your default setting? And to me, I think you can rewrite your default setting. So 20 years ago, my default setting, uh, whether I was vacationing or at home would have probably looked very similar. And so when I travel, it's really not like my brain switches at all. Like I don't, I, I love your thought process. Like I want to come back healthier than I left but to me it's like um it just doesn't change no I'm a healthy person so like I'm gonna be a healthy version of myself at home and I'm gonna be a healthy version of myself when I travel and I you know when I make an error on my diet which I'm gonna call it that it is it is I miss the mark I get off track it is a fully intentional and acceptable error in my mind there is not this moment that i'm going to say that it is like oh man i can't believe that three days i just ate terrible and i feel awful if i did that it would be because i chose to do that fully accepting the consequences that come with that yeah so um when i travel i'm gonna work out when I travel, I'm going to make sure I'm eating protein. At, you know, you notice even this weekend, I, every time I buy a shake at a gas station, because I know when I travel, protein is going to be harder to come around. It is. It's a harder one to and get. And so we were at gas stations We're or even in the airport. I'm buying bars. a muscle milk or whatever. You know, I found one I actually like the taste of it. Um, not the muscle milk that I one. I was about didn't. to say it's not the one. No, you but you know, it's like oh. I, I, you know, I think that that factors into a little bit of my OCD and my kind of just desire to always try to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and I recognize too, like I've shared on this thing before, is I'm on the same journey as you. Um, I'm just a little bit further ahead on my journey. I started almost 20 years ago. And so in that 20 years time, did it always look like it looks today? No, there was times, you know, that I remember like probably blowing it entirely on a a trip just because I conformed to the situation as opposed to now I basically, you know, through whether it's discipline, planning, you create your own circumstances. Correct. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, again, 70% of America is overweight and out of shape. That means 70% of the people around you are going to have those yeah. habits that got them that way, meaning they will be, uh, or rather, you will be influenced by them if you're not careful. Uh, and that's why, like... Absolutely. Yeah, so, like, you got to go in. For me, it's not so much... Um, 
I guess my identity is that of a fit person, but uh, from the, <laughs> uh, yes, Gus, I would I would classify you as a fit well, person. But but I don't like. I have so when I go, I do my mindset does change when I travel, um, and that's just because like I am out of my normal routine. I'm a very big person of routine. Every morning I wake up at like the exact same time, even when I don't want to. I roll out of bed, even when I don't want to. I start writing. That's the first. No, I'm sorry. I I, I write out my day. First thing I do, every single hour and every single minute is accounted for. That's what I follow. And then I start writing like an article or something else or like whatever that's um, informational and that I can give to other people that can. Mm -hmm. I'm very routine. And sometimes I'm, when you travel, it's, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't do that when we woke up at two in the morning and got home at 9 p.m. on Monday, you know, like we were traveling the entire time. Um, So I do have a different mindset when I travel. And again, I shared it with you. It's I try and go in it uh, with the idea of getting fitter while I'm traveling than when I'm not. And that involves a certain set of systems for me. And one of those systems is like when I travel, I want to work out at least twice. Again, does it always happen? No. Usually does, though, even if it's in my hotel room, which is Mm -hmm. what I did this past time. Um. And I also worked out before we left on Thursday. So check for those. The other one is how I eat. And I don't count calories or anything like that when I'm on vacation. I find it too difficult because a lot of the times you are in like a gas station or you're eating out or like you can't, you don't always have control of the food that's being provided for you if you're at a conference or whatever. Luckily, this one was awesome. Oh, yeah. The like food was, food was great. Food was awesome. And healthy. Yes. But – If you're in a circumstance like when you can't control that kind of stuff, you do have to have systems that help you. And mine are uh, how I control the amount that I eat. And again, it's not by counting calories. I've shared this before, but I use my hands. Okay, Protein is a palm-sized serving. Uh, Veggies is a fist. Fat's a thumb. And then carbohydrates is a cupped handful. Ladies get one serving of each. Guys get two. So two of each of those little measurements. And as long as you know what each food falls into that category or you can generally kind of guess you're usually pretty good and then you just have that on your plate you finish your plate and you're done you don't go back for seconds like i don't you i I might have dessert once when i'm on when i'm traveling or this this past weekend i didn't have any at all um if someone buys it for me i'll eat it but that's just because like i have this other system in place where i'm controlling all the other meals so if someone comes up to me and says hey here's a dessert i bought it for you I'll be like okay you know because i'm already proactively controlling the portions that i'm having in all my other meals so i don't it doesn't bother me does that make sense yeah no and i think you know it, it's so good that you hear from gus and me because we're two totally different perspectives two different perspectives i don't and- know how we get along <laughs> And, you know, I think, you know, going back to my earlier days when I was, you know, probably from old enough to even know what was entering my body to 18, it was like, I don't care. And, but I didn't even know to care. So it was, I almost lived in this, uh, there was no knowledge, right? So it was a yeah, no. What like, this is careless kind of- choices, but didn't even realize that there was such thing as caring, yeah, about what you eat. Yep. And I think there's a category of that person that still exists today as an adult. So even though I was, you know, 14, 15, drinking, you know, five or six soft drinks or as many refills as I wanted at any restaurant, and I think that you know when people travel, you have those types of people too that they don't really know or care what they're eating at home so when they travel they don't really know or care and then you have what i would consider myself from 18 to 21 which is kind of where i think most people live if i were to say the majority of people watching this exact episode and working out regularly is where i lived from 18 to 21 and where that was is i want to be healthy Mm -hmm. i want to lose body fat I want to make really good choices. I'm working out regularly. Yep. Yet, I am not getting results. Largely due to the ways that I'm eating. (laughs) You know? And so, I think most people live there. And then what I did at 21 
is I did at that time, and Gus knows this, it was a 12-week Body for Life challenge, and yeah. it taught me Bill Phillips. how to eat and how to, eat, how to eat for not just a weekend or a week, but how to eat for a 12-week period of time, and I saw phenomenal results, and that convinced me in that period of time that nutrition mattered. And it's very similar to what we do with Six Week Challenge. Yes. And, and is in a six week period, we will have you fully commit to a program, hold you accountable, give you all the tools necessary. You get phenomenal results, and then you learn the value of eating healthy. It is which a then six week crash course. It's a brainwashing <laughs> experiment. It's exactly. kind of what I think. After those twelve weeks, I was completely brainwashed to understand the impact of what I ate and how it made a difference. Mm-hmm. I was 16.9% body fat when I started at 206 pounds. And then 12 weeks later, I was 202 pounds, 4% body fat. I lost four pounds on the scale, but I lost 12% body fat. Yep. And it was crazy how different it was. Nutrition. If you're talking fat loss or weight control or body composition or any of those fancy terms... Now add gotta 16 eat right years yeah. to that, and that's where I am today. So yep. it is, I think a lot of how you do when you travel has to do with where you are in your journey. Be real honest. Yes. Are you, are you just getting started? Because you need to kind of probably understand that you when you're just getting started, it's not going to be like someone who's 20 years in. Success or, is made in a messy kitchen. Meaning, yeah. Well, we just hung out with yeah. CrossFit gyms that have been around for 10 plus years. Yep. As most of you know that are watching this, you know, nowadays CrossFit's a very popular uh, very popular brand and there's CrossFit there's over 15,000 in the world. Probably the most popular fitness brand right now. These people that were, we're at well this known. at this particular gathering have learned all those lessons that you learn in the first 5 years. They're, 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 they've, they've matured to a point where you know, they don't make the same mistakes they've, they've, they've made in the beginning. When you're a new gym owner, you're probably learning those lessons in the first you know, yeah, the three years. the lessons apply here too. Well, it's, it's like, the same here. The same you, thing. you, in the first five years of your fitness journey, and change, you know, notice I said I'm 16 years into my nutrition journey because I really believe it started at 21 even though my fitness journey started at 18. And so I wouldn't even count those three years. That was like my mistake years. That's my wilderness. Maybe you hang out in your wilderness for 10 years. You know, my yeah. three years of the wilderness was I'm working out regularly. I want to lose body fat. But you're not. But I'm not because I'm not eating the, the way, way I need to be eating be. because I didn't know how to do it. And so... Yep. That's the wilderness. And if we can help you, I don't want you to be in the wilderness for three years. I want you to be in the wilderness no time at all. You know, the in the in the in the Old Testament, it talks about this the journey in the wilderness for 40 years was actually about a day's journey. Like it wasn't a, this crazy long distance that they had to travel to the promised land. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. And so if you think about what your wilderness, like what how long have you been hitting your head up against the wall, trying to eat healthy, working out a lot, and not getting results. I mean, that right there... Probably a lot of people. And most people get so frustrated and they live in the wilderness that they quit or they give up or they stop for a period of time. I'm taking six months off. I'm taking three months off. And then you get recharged. You watch a, a, a video or something motivates you. A friend invites you to the gym. So you start back over only to re-enter the wilderness until you get the actual plan that works, which is kind of what we sell here, right? I mean, that's we do. That's our whole mission, right? For a small fee. If you watch okay. all of our videos and if you listen to all the content that we put out, our goal is to get you through this journey of health and fitness to as get results. quickly as possible, as long as you are willing to follow the plan and, and do, do the work. work. We said that at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, there is still, information's great, it's all over YouTube, we're the only one you should probably be listening to though. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, not true, there's Just people kidding. that, there, there are, are people that people. put out really good information, but. However, yeah. it is useless, including ours, 
until you actually do take the action every single day mm-hmm. consistently. Like, and it does get repetitive and dull yeah. and boring. That's a good thing. Yeah, it means you don't have to learn something new every time. It's yeah. not always. It's not glamorous, but the like what we tell you are the things that work. So, uh, try this the next time you do travel. Okay, again, you, it, perfection is not the goal. Success is made in a messy kitchen. I expect that you'll probably have a few meals here and there where like you do go overboard. That's fine. So do I. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is that you want to try and continue trying it and getting better at it every single time. Thus, success is made. Yeah. Uh, but with that note, just to rehash, palm for protein, vegetable is fist, thumb is fat, and then carbohydrates, carbs, the good stuff, uh, are a cup tanned. And just for the record, do not try and make a tower on top of your cupped hand. Okay, level it off the top and then put it on your plate. You're good, or even eyeball it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're not trying to make Mount Everest of carbs on top of your hand. <laughs> Okay. So with that said, I want you to go out and try that. If you have questions, I want you to contact us, reach out to us directly. Uh, Instagram's a great place to be. He's his trainer, Charlie. You can also email us. I'm Gus at BoomFitBCS.com. And well, also... and, and I will save you a lot of time and frustration. I like that. Just come sign up for the six-week challenge. Give us six weeks. Yep. Commit to our program. We're about to launch a group with the six-week challenge, yep. and we want you in it. So – yep. I, I want to save you three years that I of spent grief. in the wilderness and for you to get... And let's turn big, it into six weeks. Yeah, let's do it six weeks. I mean, again, you know, worst case, you end up losing fat, loving life, and meeting great people. That's seriously the worst thing that could happen. So if that sounds great to you, then... I would definitely just reach out. <laughs> if you want all the benefits with none of the drawbacks. <laughs> no, I mean, really, guys, um, that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. And so if that sounds like something you're interested in, just reach out. Yep. Rewind for those points of contact. Yeah. Uh, feel free to email us on those. Um, but, yeah, act quickly. There there are limited spots, by the yes. way. Yes. Right? Yes. So just so you know, and it's a popular program. But all that being said, we'll close out with all that. I'm Gus. This is Charlie. This is the Boom Fit Bros, and we'll see you next time. And this is C4. Sponsor us. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.